Okay, that was our sponsor. We want to thank Mike Shirley, the FTI, and also our other sponsor, Lumio, and we'll be back with that uh, video too in, in, in a little bit. So that was our first intermission. Uh, we'll break again for the judge's deliberation, but we have three more companies. We've had three amazing companies, and now three more. Uh, Provoro is the next company. Barbara, who's speaking to us from Provoro? Uh, yes, I'd like to introduce Mike Fong. He's the founder and CEO of Provoro. It's a hardware-based mobile security company focused, I'm sorry, founded to return control of privacy and security to users and organizations in the era, in the era of mobility. Mike happens to be a successful serial entrepreneur and business executive who started his technology career studying electrical engineering at Carnegie Mellon University. Mike, take it away. Thank you very much, uh, judges. Thank you for your time. Uh, so a couple macro trends about why Provoro exists, uh, and I'll hit those quickly. Uh, first and foremost, the world has changed, and uh, smartphones are now the primary compute device on the planet. Uh, billions in use, billions being sold, uh, and two-thirds of the world's population are expected to have them within the next several years. So that's great, but the problem is that there are uh, a lot of data collection issues around the smartphone, and there are security issues as well because they're fundamentally commercial devices. The second major trend is that voice is emerging as a primary interface for all electronic devices. Uh, and that's great because as humans, we'd rather uh, talk than type uh, to our devices. But the issue is if you deal with sensitive or confidential information, you need to make sure that these things only listen when you speak to them, not all the time. Uh, the third macro trend is that software-only security solutions don't solve the problem. And this has become a lot more, uh, uh, I guess, prevalent, or people have become more aware of it now uh, with uh, examples like Spectre and Meltdown and other chip-based attacks. Mm -hmm. It's not just Intel and AMD, but it's Broadcom, Qualcomm, and others. And at the end of the day, while every layer of a technology stack is attacked, uh, one thing that's sure is if you come in at a lower layer, at a firmware or chip, you defeat any uh, security that may be at a higher layer at the app or the operating system level. So the combination of these uh, three things um, result in policies like the Department of Defense ban on smartphones in secure spaces, which results in pictures like the one on the right where uh, people are separated from the devices. So you have a, a couple of colliding tidal waves here, you know, the, the use of mobility and then people trying to say you can't use them at all. Uh, which is uh, untenable, and it impacts morale, productivity, and many other types of things. So the solution, and what we spend a lot of time uh, trying to solve, is we said, what would you do if you can't trust the underlying commercial device? And the answer is you build a high security device around that commercial device, uh, which is what we did. So what you see here in the picture is a high security intelligent modular platform that's cloud integrated as well with a companion app. and the table stakes for entry into this business is that you have to go down to the chip level and start your security model there. So the platform has an independent hardware root of trust with a very specialized security and crypto architecture, which uh, makes it uh, not susceptible to chip and firmware-based attacks. Uh, and we've worked with uh, former uh, intelligence community folks to develop this architecture and have it vetted and developed. Uh, the question then becomes, what do you do from that secure foundation? And the first thing uh, offering that we rolled out on it is anti-surveillance. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a quick demo of that since we actually make product. But it's also important to know that the platform itself has different types of processing, sensor, and communication capabilities, all of which serve as building blocks to add other features over time. From a, a surveillance perspective, uh, what I'll do is uh, pull up the... Um, the camera app that we all use uh, all the time. And I will flip it to the uh, device here. So if I am recording, uh, for example, you may say, hey, we're going to move the 82nd Airborne Division to uh, Europe, and uh, then we're going to ask them to attack uh, next Tuesday at 7 p.m. And so uh, people talk about sense of information all the time around their phone. Uh, if I play this back, uh, I'll see the camera can. Here. So if I am recording, uh, for example, you may say, hey, we're going to move to uh, Europe, and uh, then we're going to ask them to attack. And so, uh, so the idea is you get full use of your phone, uh, text messages, emails, uh, use any app. But uh, while the hood is down, the green LEDs blink, every single mic is separately and independently jammed to a nation state threat model, 
true random noise shaped audio jammers, uh, jammers customized to protect against human voice uh, for every single mic on the phone. Both cameras covered. Pop this up, sensors detect up or down. You can make a phone call, take a picture, boom, you're protected again. Super simple, super easy. Uh, now you can get massive increase in 7x24 OPSEC everywhere you go and uh, ideally start to be able to take this into secure spaces. Not skiffs yet, but start, uh, start at the next level, right? Um, the other thing we did is we made the platform modular. So if you take a look here at the back, uh, we actually now you allow you uh, to sort of add any new hardware innovation around the phone, but not be dependent on the OEM maker. So it could be things like alternative transport. You could put seconds. an Iridium satellite module back here, a wireless mesh uh, capability. Uh, it could be sensors um, and many other sort of examples down the road. Uh, very simple to use. As I showed you earlier, it looks like a phone case, highly intelligent, secure device. You simply slide the tray, drop the phone in, you're protected. So that's, uh, that's what we're up to. And time. Okay, judges, you're off. Uh, I'll fire an opening salvo at you. Um, so can you talk a little bit about um, any sort of like platform dependencies that the tool has or the technology has? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously new cell phones are coming out on a yearly basis. You know, is there any sort of inherent dependency, hardware dependency on the platform itself? And then can you talk a little bit about um, extending to that uh, key management and how you might uh, manage, like if I want to have a, an encrypted call with an individual, how, how do we exchange keys to set up that secure conversation? Okay, so uh, first question, platform dependency. So this particular case I'm showing you here works for the iPhone 7 and iPhone 8. Uh, the vast majority of the IP around the product is in the electronics, the firmware, you know, ITAR manufacturing facility, secure provisioning, the closed PKI system, uh, on and on and on. All of that is directly transferable and reusable for any other hardware platform. Uh, it really just boils down to we have to do the plastics uh, for the different devices so we can immediately... So physical enclosure. Exactly. It's not a technology Samsung, problem. tablets, uh, laptops. We can even do these things down the road for Amazon Alexa, Samsung televisions. The core jamming technology and other sensor protection technologies are all portable. Mm -hmm. um, key management, so from a roadmap perspective, we do have a high-end digital signal processor on here, uh, and we are looking at moving encrypted calling off the phone onto the device. That would be a roadmap capability. Okay, uh, just so the encrypted calls today are managed by the app on the phone? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. Totally you. exciting. You know how many customers are going to want this for their smart TV at home that aren't DOD or the intelligence <laughs> community? Um, I think that it very complimentary, very Thank nice you. design as well because it's an add-on. Um, speak to where you are currently selling and where you see the technology going and, and speak to commercial and government markets. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we just announced this platform about six weeks ago and started shipping about three weeks ago. Um, and we are focused initially on the, uh, find the, the enterprise and the government marketplace. We know there's a large consumer market, but you know, we have to, as a startup, pick uh, where we go first. And so the thought was uh, meet the needs of these high-end customers, and from there we can expand and keep driving size, weight, cost down, and make it even you know, more easy for consumers to, to use the product. Is the product currently patented? I mean, is there is an IP? What, what, what type of provision? Because I, I imagine some uh, folks like Huawei or ZTE or some of those dudes like that yeah. um, are very interested in understanding that to be able to do countermeasures to feet around it. So, I mean, how, how are, can you speak to, since your customer is going to be primarily the intelligence community, also DOD, we want to stay you know, a step ahead of this. So what are we doing and, and to yes. protect that, those interests? Yeah, so great question. Uh, we have uh, multiple issued patents. I think we have like another nine to 12 uh, provisionals in process of being converted to utility and a very large suite of actually other patents under development right now that are uh, hopefully will be filed soon on a bunch of our roadmap capabilities. So feel good from that perspective. Um, and then, uh, you know, there are some really interesting uh, challenges dealing with some of the sure. uh, places you mentioned that we have uh, separate strategies around how we do it. But um, one of the key criteria was doing building it all in an ITAR certified facility in the United States and then actually adding additional protections inside that facility uh, to further protect against the most sophisticated uh, attackers given the customer base with some very high profile uh, folks who um, obviously want this type of technology on their devices, which makes us a target as well. Absolutely. How are you? No questions. I, uh, I'm fascinated as an electrical engineer. I'm always interested in unique technologies. And, and I'm, as you were talking, I was thinking of, 
you know, a way to automate some of the features that you have because, you know, if you're working in a secure facility, you don't want the phones operating in those environments or even in an environment that you don't want devices transmitting or receiving. So is there any thoughts in trying to enhance the capabilities to be more automated because you still have the human in the decision-making loop here yes, to decide when to in, mm -hmm. uh, introduce your features? That's a great point. So we spend a lot of time on that. There, uh, you know, the, We don't, almost don't have a lot of time to go into it, but we have all kinds of mitigations to protect against insider threat. Uh, sensors actually detect and log every time a mic or camera is exposed and jamming is turned off if the phone is taken out of the case. Uh, there's a gig of storage here. It's integrated into the cloud, uh, dual tunnel encryption to send it up to there. Uh, so the idea was we could actually do things like set a geofence around a facility, um, and you're able to do different things like that. We have an RF power detector. We can detect if the uh, device is emitting, if it's violating policy that you may have turned off Wi-Fi, you know, on and on. So I'd love to geek out with you uh, yeah. after the, the session if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. And that will be okay. time Thank right you, there. gentlemen. Thank, thank you very much, Mike. That's a prime candidate for SBTT. Interesting technology we've got here. It's a tech couple of